Hey, this is Eric and welcome to this session on YouTube can do that. Uh, before we dive on into our session, a little bit of housekeeping here to get everybody started. Uh, first of all, I want to make sure you can get to the resources for the session. Uh, you'll see the link here, the bit.ly uh, link. So it's bit.ly slash Kurtz dash YouTube tips that will get you to a Google document and that document has all of the stuff we're going to be exploring during this session and maybe even a little bit more uh, that document looks like this so if that's where you're winding up you're in the right place it's a pretty good sized document about, about 10 pages and so as we go through all the stuff in the uh, video you can follow along there's uh, directions and uh, links and resources uh, in this uh, resource document that will allow you to try out all the stuff that we are taking a look at in this session. Again, that's bit.ly slash Kurtz dash YouTube tips. So here's the idea behind this session. Uh, we all love YouTube. We all use YouTube. It's a phenomenal website with uh, just, you know, <laughs> billions and billions of videos out there for pretty much anything that you would ever need help with. There, There's a video on it. Uh, and, but the thing is, there's a lot of neat features about YouTube that we may not be taking advantage of. And that's pretty much what this session is. I just tried to collect a bunch of different ideas on some of the maybe lesser known features or some tips and tricks, things to maximize your YouTube experience for you and for your students. And so basically that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna run through these. I'm gonna uh, start at the first one and try to get through, <laughs> get through all of these in the time that we have. Hopefully I'll be able to. If I do go quickly through anything though, keep in mind again, you can get to all of these resources at bit.ly slash Kurtz dash YouTube tips and that does have detailed directions so if there's a spot that you need a little bit more uh, information on you can find that in that agenda document with uh, a little bit more details in there as well all right well let's get going again we're just gonna head down straight through this list and try to get through as many of these as we can in the time that we have all right, so very first thing to start off with, we're gonna talk about adjusting your playback speed in YouTube. And this one actually is a, it's a good one to start with because while you're watching this you know, video, or if you're watching any any video on, on YouTube, uh, you can adjust the speed at which it plays back. And that can really, you know, it could save you a lot of time if you want to watch it quicker um, or if you needed to slow it down. I think usually for me, I speed up videos because we can listen a lot faster than people can talk. <laughs> and so uh, I'll show you how, how that works. And I've got a bunch of videos pulled up already. I'm gonna be referencing different videos throughout the session. Uh, for example, this one is from our Google Educator Group uh, meeting. We do a monthly uh, Google Educator Group meeting for Ohio, but it's really open to anybody. You're certainly welcome <laughs> to, uh, to watch these and uh, take part in these meetings as well. But they're long videos. These are usually about two hours long, um, the, the, the meetings we cover cover you know, everything new in Google. We cover uh, questions and answers. We do like a show and tell section where we share neat ideas. But it makes for a pretty long video. So it's like a two hour long video. Uh, so if I were to come in here and, and start playing this, and I do have this muted, I'll probably mute and unmute throughout the, the session, but I, I'm probably gonna keep the videos muted most of the time just so I'm not obviously talking over myself. Um, but if I were to play this video, uh, that's a that's a two hour commitment. <laughs> that's a lot of time. Well, you can probably save yourself a little bit of time just by speeding it up. And you can do that by heading down here to your settings gear in the bottom right corner and then going to playback speed. And you'll see you've got all these different options here to slow it down or speed it up. So what I'm gonna do, I will unmute it for a second so you can hear the difference and then I'll go ahead and speed it up. So let's try this out. Let's unmute it. Thank you guys so much, everybody, for being here. Uh, so all of the resources for our meeting today can be found in this Google document that we use for each of our meetings. Um, I did drop the link for this in the YouTube chat, but you can always get to it at our, G our GEG Ohio website. So it's just bit.ly slash GEG Ohio. You can see that link on the screen there. Um, that takes you out to a website that looks like this. And then from the... 
And so there we're actually at two times the speed. And uh, even then it's not too hard to follow along. And so I do that a lot. A lot of times I will increase the speed quite a lot. You do have that option, of course, to slow it down as well um, if you want. Normally that's that's not necessary, uh, but it, but if you do, it makes everybody sound kind of sad. <laughs> but we'll just, we'll go back to normal there. And like I said, I'll probably uh, mute and unmute uh, the videos as we go through. So take advantage of that tip and save yourself a little Little bit of time when you are watching videos. Next up, let's talk about picture and picture mode. So this is a really neat feature that it's kind of hidden away in YouTube, but what it lets you do is it lets you pop out the video you're watching into a floating window, and then you can move it around, resize it, and the beauty of it is it stays on top even if you switch around to different tabs and windows. So let's say I'm watching the GEG Ohio uh, meeting, but I want to be following along in the agenda document. So here's the here's the uh, the agenda document document and let's say I want to be you know following along in this while I'm watching the video well what I can do is using my uh, my mouse I'm going to right click twice on the video it's kind of odd uh, the first time you click you're gonna get like this uh, pop-up window um, but it does not have the option we need. So you'll click a second time. You'll actually right click twice in the same spot. And the second time you do it, you should get the picture in picture option. So let's try that out. So we'll come back over and again, I think I've got that muted. Yep. So um, I'm going to click play. It is playing, but it is muted. So taking my mouse, I'm going to click right click once and right click twice. And there it is on that second right click picture in picture. Now, when I click that, notice what it just did it just popped the video out and now the video is still playing i can make it bigger or smaller i can move it around but the thing is it stays on top so if i went over to my um, agenda document now and i'm going through following along in the agenda document i can be watching the video playing here and again i've got it muted at the moment but it's playing up here in the top corner or wherever i want to move it around to uh so this would be fantastic especially like let's say a student is needing to work on a project but they need to watch a video that goes along with the project so while they're doing their document or their slideshow and they're trying out the content they're able to watch the content over here as well so it's just two right clicks and you get this nice picture and picture option now when you're all done you can close out of that and it will just head right back to uh, being where it was in the original YouTube uh, page. All right, next up. Uh, captions. Oh, yes. So there's a lot of great caption features that are part of YouTube. Um, and it used to be in the past that if you wanted to have captions with your videos, you had to add a uh, caption track to it. You had to create the captions and upload this file for captions. Well, Google's AI has come so far since then. Now, any video you upload, if you give it a little bit of time, Google's AI will actually go through and auto-generate subtitles for you. And this can be really useful for a lot of reasons it could be you know that you know while you're playing a video in class you know it could there could be some some noise or maybe a student is at a spot of the room where they're having a hard time hearing being able to see the captions while listening to it could be helpful for that purpose but also there's been a, a, just a lot of studies done that show that comprehension increases when you hear something and you see it at the same time when you read the text and hear the text it also helps for students to learn to read to be able to connect the spoken word with the written word so having captions available is is beneficial for all of us i turn them on all the time if i'm watching a, a movie or a tv show at home i have the captions on because i find that i miss things if i don't have that on as well so really easy to do all we need to do is uh, head back over to our geg ohio meeting here and while that's playing if i come down here and i click on the little caption button down there it will now bring up captions and you say well wow you know did we add two hours of captions? No, of course not. These are auto-generated captions. And um, if you're not sure about that, you can click on the settings and you'll even see here for subtitles, it says English auto-generated. So uh, now if somebody did provide uh, a caption file with it, it would certainly, it would default to that first, but we can very easily um, use the auto-generated captions for 
any any video that's out there. Again, it may just take it a little bit of time for those to generate after you first upload the video. Now, speaking of the captions, we also have some neat settings we can do with them because sometimes when the captions pop up, it may be difficult to see them. They might be a little small. So by going into the gear and going into the um, subtitles section and going into the options, you can adjust all kinds of things. You can change the font, the color, the size. So if I was wanting to you know, make these captions a little bit easier to read, I could go to my settings. I could go back to the subtitles where we were at, where I had chosen the uh, English auto-generated. But if I go up to options here in the top right of that, now I can change all kinds of things, like maybe the font size. Maybe I just really need to make the captions larger so that we can see them a little bit better. You know, or, you know, the color, uh, the background, lots of possibilities there of things that we can tweak as needed on that. One more thing on captions that is really awesome, and that is translating captions. So um, Google's AI, again, <laughs> you know, uh, is, is helping us out here. Not only does Google's AI uh, make the auto-generated captions, but it can also do auto-translation into other languages. So this would be really great. Let's say there's um, a student who you know, English is not their primary language. Maybe they're an English language learner. And what would be helpful for them while they're watching a video in English and hearing it in, in English, what if they could read along um, in their own language? What if they could have the captions there, but have those translated into their own language so they can, you know, if they get stuck on something, they can see their own language while they are hearing it. So let's try that. We'll head back over and start that playing up again. What I'm going to do is simply go down to my settings, go back into my subtitles, but instead of choosing English auto-generated, I'm going to choose auto-translate. Now, when I do that, it's going to give me all of these different languages I can choose from. And all I need to do is scroll down and find the language I want to translate into. I'll just pick Spanish as an example here. And now it is translate. It's doing the auto-generated captions, but it's now also translating them as it goes. Uh, so awesome. Great feature there. I'll go ahead and switch this back over to the... Um, auto-generated, but uh, we're in good shape. Awesome, and I'll go ahead and turn off the captions there. Good stuff. Well, let's keep on going. Next up, another neat feature in YouTube is the ability to download the transcript. So all these captions that we've just talked about, so you can you know watch the captions while you're watching the video, turns out you can actually pop out a, a sidebar that has that full transcript, all of the captions, not just, you know, while you're watching the video, but the entire set of all the captions over on the side in a transcript. And not only that, but you could, if you wanted, you could select, copy, and paste that into a document and then have your own set of, you know, notes that you could then type into while you are watching the video. Now, because this is such a long video, I'm going to go to one that's a little bit shorter. Here's another one of my videos. This one's about uh, passwords and positive self-talk. So one of my uh, videos on um, uh, positive mental health and, and things like that. Uh, so this one's a lot shorter. It's like a five-minute video. <laughs> so I'm using this one just because it would be less to less to copy over here. But if you're if you are in a, in a video, um, and again you can turn on captions and boom, there there they are. We got you know got our captions running there. Um, but, you, but again, you don't have to turn on the captions for this, what you can do is you can go to the bottom right corner below the video. There's a little three dots button down there. If you give a click on that, one of the options is to show transcript. When you click on that, it pops up a transcript. And this is all of the captions for the entire video, and they're all time stamped there as well. So you can, you know, read the captions on the video, or you can see the captions here. And while the video plays, it actually will go down. This is a, um, you can see it's interactive, like it's 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 scrolling and it's highlighting what is currently being said. So I, if I had the captions on, we would see the same thing happening over there as well. So I'd have my captions there and I'd also have the transcript on the side. Um, another cool thing about it is you can click on the transcript to jump to different spots. If I wanted to click on a certain spot, boom, click on it and it jumps me to that spot in the video. But like I said, another neat thing is you could just select all of this. You could highlight all of this and copy and paste it over into another document. So to do that, I'm just taking my mouse and I'm just literally clicking and dragging over this. And when I do that, um, I can now 
uh, copy, Control C, Control V, or right click, copy, paste. Um, I just did Control C to copy it, and then I could open up a new document. I could paste it in there. Now I probably would paste it without all the formatting. So if you go to edit paste, that's control V. Control shift V is paste without formatting. And that'll drop it in without like any of the extra formatting. And that might make it a little bit cleaner. But there you go. Now you've got a full transcript of the video if you wanted to use that to uh, take your own notes or to refer back to. Um, which again, could be, could be helpful for someone. Good stuff. All right, we'll go ahead and close out of that transcript. Next up, keyboard shortcuts. So all of Google's tools have keyboard shortcuts that do lots of handy things for us. Uh, YouTube is no different. There's a whole bunch of them here. I'll, I'll demonstrate a few of them, uh, but there's, there's quite a, a bunch of neat ones. So while you're in a video, the space bar or the letter K uh, will play or pause the video, It'll toggle it back and forth. But if you want to jump throughout the video, if you want to move through the video, things like J and L will move you forward and backwards by 10 seconds, left and right arrow by five seconds, and then the comma or the period by one frame at a time. And we'll try this out here in a second. You can also press the numbers one through nine to jump to a certain spot of the video, all the way from 10% up to 90%. So each number corresponds to 10% of the video. So let's go ahead and um, tell you what, we'll do a different video for this one um, because uh, I want to show the, the uh, the impact of just moving a frame at a time as well. Uh, let's see, I've got a video here um, about putting Coca-Cola <laughs> inside of calcium, or putting calcium carbide inside of Coca-Cola. And so, uh, uh, spoiler alert, it makes an explosion. Uh, but if I were playing this video, at, at any point while I'm playing the video, if I were to use, for example, my uh, arrow keys, my you know right and left arrow keys, that's five seconds forward or five seconds back, or if I use the L and J, that's 10 seconds forward or 10 seconds back. And so I use this to scrub through videos a lot of times. It really helps me to get to the spot. Ooh, hey, there we go, something happened. <laughs> that was pretty exciting. So here we have the explosion. Uh, they've got the calcium carbide in there and it's gonna blow up here in a second. Uh, there it goes, okay. Now, if I pause it there, and if I use the uh, the comma and the period, remember that's a frame at a time. So if I could press on the comma, that's gonna move me to the left one frame at a time. I can get it to the spot where the explosion actually happens. So that this could be really neat for like science videos if you're wanting to, oh, there it is. <laughs> so in one frame, boom, <laughs> you can see just how massively impactful that explosion is. And I'm just using my, my period uh, and my comma to move forward and backwards one frame at a time. So uh, that's that's pretty awesome. Now, at the same time, if I wanted to jump to a different spot in the video, uh, uh, the, the numbers one through 10, will jump me, you know, percentage wise through the video as well. So uh, a lot of nice ways to quickly move through your video. Some other useful things, M to mute and unmute, uh, the greater than and less than keys will also speed up and slow down the playback, which we saw earlier through the menu. That'll work. Um, and then there's some other quick things like toggling on closed captions with C, full screen with F, or opening the mini player with I. So a lot of useful uh, keyboard shortcuts there to help us. All right, next up, let's talk about trying to reduce some distractions. So uh, as much as I love YouTube, I think it's a fan, fantastic tool. Sometimes, yeah, I do get there can be some distractions. So for example, on most videos, you're going to have um, your uh, suggested videos over here on the right. You're going to have uh, usually comments. This one doesn't in this example, but usually comments down on the bottom. And sometimes those comments can be um, a little bit distracting. Um, and, uh, and so there are tools out there, there are services out there that can clean up you know, a YouTube video to make it uh, less distracting. And, and I've recommended a lot of those in the past. The biggest problem I've run into with them is sometimes they, they, they don't keep um, doing what they said they, they were going to do. Like uh, I've seen some that uh, you'll give them the YouTube video and they're supposed to, you know, strip out all the distractions and just give you a nice clean video. But then, you know, as that site gets popular, maybe it gets sold and somebody else buys it and then maybe they're collecting data you don't want them to collect. And so uh, sometimes I get a little bit nervous about those non Google sites and how they, uh, how they handle the YouTube videos. So I was excited 
um, a while back to come across a feature that's actually from Google. So this is an option to reduce distractions without having to use one of the third party extensions or tools or websites. It's just it's just something that Google provides. It's their no cookies mode. So this is this is just a different mode of viewing videos. The no cookies mode. Uh, does a few things. Uh, it's going to play full screen, so you're going to get the video on the whole screen, nothing else on there. There's not going to be any comments down below. There's not going to be recommendations over on the side. Um, and then a as far as like ads go, I believe it reduces the ads. I'm not positive. Um, I haven't, you know, you know, tried it uh, enough times to say for sure, but um, typically I do not see ads popping up as well when I use this. Now, the way the no cookies mode works, it's kind of interesting, uh, the, the shortcut to get to it. I'm not sure how, how they thought of this, but if you take a normal YouTube link and you add a dash, like the minus sign after the T in YouTube, it will redirect you to the no cookies website. So that link will then turn into the no cookies link. So let's say I grab the same video we're on right here. I'll just uh, I'll just duplicate the tab. So we've got it over here on this new tab and I'll, I'll pause it there. Um, so if I were to, um, there we go. If I were to go up to the address bar, and again, I'm gonna click in the address bar and I'm gonna go right after the T in YouTube and I'm going to put in um, a dash, like a, like, like a, a minus sign. And when I do that, when I press enter, it's going to refresh the tab and it's put me into no cookie mode. So at the top, you'll see the address has changed to youtube-nocookie.com. And so now when I go to play this, and I'll mute this again. Now, when I go to play it, you'll see that it is it is playing full screen. I don't have to do anything to make it do that. It's playing full screen. And of course, I'm not getting anything else. There's no other stuff going on. There's no comments below. There's no suggested videos over here on the side. Um, and so this is this can be a nice link to use if you want to share a video with your students and you don't want them to actually be going to the YouTube site. But instead, now we still did get some uh, recommended videos after I paused it there, but that's okay. That's just a little pop up on there, but the rest of it, um, very clean, very nice, uh, nice way to be able to share a link with your students and they can just watch the video and not, uh, uh have to worry about the other possible distracting elements on the site. All right, next up, another neat feature is the ability to make a clip from a YouTube video. Maybe you don't want to share the entire video. Maybe there's a video that's longer uh, than you need to share. You just need a little spot of that video that you want to share to your students. So let's say maybe back on this one here where we, maybe we want to actually get the spot where the, uh, the Coke bottle explodes and we just want to you know grab a little snippet out of it there well you can do that um down below the youtube video there's actually a link called clip and when you click on the clip when you click on the clip uh button down there you can then set the start and end time up to a minute um and you can add in a title and it will generate a, a unique link for you that you can then share that will give just that particular spot of the video so if i came here and said yep this is a pretty good spot. Let's come down and click on the clip button there uh, and we'll give it a description. We'll say um, exploding bottle. And um, and I can adjust this again. This is only at 15 seconds right now. It's just grabbing that spot of it. But I could go up to a minute and I could move the start and end time. But as long as I'm happy with that, I'll just click on share clip. Give that a moment. And there we go. There is the link. If I copy that link, now I can use that link. I could, I could give that link to folks and anybody who follows that link, it's going to jump them right to that particular spot in the video. They're just getting that 15 second uh, loop there rather than getting the entire video itself. Now there's a little link next to it that says watch full video if you wanted to switch over to that. But instead, you could just share this and that way the students are just viewing the spot that you wanted them to view in the video. Pretty snazzy. Oh, and I didn't even notice that. It uses the, uh, <laughs> it uses the emoji for scissors up in the, uh, in the tab there. So you know that's a clipped video. That's pretty, pretty neat. Neat stuff, guys. All right. All right. Let's keep on moving. We got lots of cool stuff to look at. Next up, 
What about making a GIF out of a video? So instead of um, you know grabbing a clip where you're going to send them a link and they're going to actually go to YouTube to watch that, um, you could use one of many sites, and there's so many tools out there that allow you to put in a YouTube link and then go to a spot in the video and tell it that you want to create a, an animated GIF out of it. Um, now the one I'm going to demonstrate is GIF Run, um, but you know, hey, you know, it's up. There, there's a lot of them out here. I would say, you know, check check and see which which is your favorite. There's also lots of other tools like Screencastify that can make GIFs. A lot of possibilities out there. But GIF Run works well. I've I've had success with it. It lets you adjust the duration, the start and end time, uh, the size of the GIF, frames per second, filters. If you want to put text on top of it. A lot of neat things you can do. So if I come back here and we grab our exploding Coke bottle again, and I put that here into uh, GIF Run, it, it'll take it a moment to process and pull, pull that up. But once it does, I can now start adjusting all of my settings here to say, you know, where do I want it to start? Where do I want it to end? Um, and I can generate my GIF. So I'm going to uh, pause that there, and I'm going to turn off I'm going to mute that again um, so let's say that you know I wanted to again jump up to the spot where the bottle explodes so it looks like yep about right there's probably safe and then I could say okay how long do I want the gift to last maybe and it goes up to 15 seconds I could now uh, preview that and see what does that look like is that going to be enough for it to explode yes and there it goes you know and I maybe I don't even need all 15 seconds you know I, I, I can make it short Shorter than that, um, but that looks like that does a pretty good a pretty good job there. Um, now, if I'm happy with that, I'm like, yep, that's good. That's a good spot in the video, and it lasts 15 seconds. I can now decide how big I want the video to be, how many frames per second, if I want to add any cool filters to it, and I can even add text on it if I wanted to. I could have text like you know, exploding bottle. Um, that's an odd font for that, but that's okay. Here we go. Uh, and we will update that. And now when I'm all done, I can click on create uh, GIF and it'll take it a little bit of time, but what it's gonna do is grab those 15 seconds out of the YouTube video, create an animated GIF for me, and it's gonna add that text on top of that as well. When that's all done then, I can download that um, as a GIF, um, and and once I've got it downloaded as a GIF, I can I can insert it into all kinds of things. Um, you know, you can put GIFs inside of Google Documents, you can put GIFs inside of slideshows, uh, you can, you know, share GIFs on social media. So it's a nice way to be able to get that right into the products that you are working on. Okay, it looks like we're pretty close to it being generated. I probably should have picked a little bit shorter one, but it, 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 it did it. Uh, and that's nice to see it didn't take all that long. And there it is. There is, there is the GIF there. And at that point, um, I could just click download and it will go ahead and start downloading that to my computer. And that's it. I now have that animated GIF and I could add that into things. So um, we'll head back over to our document, for example, that we used earlier for our transcript. If I wanted to, I could come in here and say, let's insert uh, image, upload from computer. And there it is sitting in my downloads. And there we go. We have an animated GIF sitting right there inside of our document now. <laughs> and that's the cool thing about GIFs is they work in most anything. You can put them in documents or slideshows, um, put them on your website, share them on social media. So pretty good stuff. All right. Thanks, GIF Run. Next up, um, speaking of docs, <laughs> uh, so uh, what if you wanted to play a video inside of a Google document? Well, that was one way around. It was turning it into a GIF and then you know putting it into your document. But what if you actually want to play you know a, a video for real inside of your document? Uh, so for example, let's say I've got um, here's this. Uh, um, hyperdoc about landforms, where I want the students to watch a video about landforms, and then I want them to fill out a graphic organizer here about the, the landform of their choice. Now, I've already got this one filled out, so you can see what it would look like in the end. But let's say I wanted to have a video in here, and there's this video here from Crash Course Kids about landforms. Let's say I copy that link, and I, and I put that link into um, uh, into my um, Google document here. Well, unfortunately, Google Docs does not yet 
provide an option to just simply embed a video right into the document. Like if I go up to the insert menu, video is not an option right there. But as you notice, when I when I put a video link in, um, and I uh, turn it into a link either by pressing enter to make it into a link or um, you can use the suggestion there. This will pop up, ask if you want to replace the link with a what they call a chip, which is just a prettier link. That's fine, too. But when I put in either a, uh, a regular link like that or if I add a, a chip for it, either way, if I click on the link or hover above the chip, it'll actually give me a little thumbnail preview. Now, this is this is something newer. Uh, Docs didn't used to do that. It's It, it does it now, though. Um, and it doesn't work for every video. Like, it has to be a public video. It can't be like a private video. Um, but for most videos, if you put a YouTube video in and let it turn into a link, either as a link or as, or as a chip, um, then when you hover above it, you'll get uh, a little preview of it. And you'll get an option that says open preview. Now, this is going to function a lot like the picture in picture we saw earlier. So what I can do is I can click open preview and it's going to pop that open. And again, I've got it muted, but it's going to start playing that video and I can shrink it up a little bit if I want to. And now I could watch that video while I work on my project. Um, and it's going to be right there inside of Google Docs without having to go out to YouTube. So I think that's a really nice option. There are other tips and tricks and ways you can, you know, uh, get around the idea that that uh, videos don't play directly in Docs. But this is a really nice option because it's something that's just built right into Google Docs. And I love how it pops up there for you uh, to be able to watch while you work on your document. Pretty nifty. All right. Um, what about other things we might want to put videos in? How about Google Drawings? Now, I love Google Drawings. I think it's a fantastic tool. So many neat things you can do with it. It's great for graphic organizers and for green screen images and for desktop publishing and oh, just so many cool things. I've got uh, lots and lots of resources on my Control Alt Achieve site with Google Drawings. So if you get excited about those, please check those out. Well, what if I wanted to add videos into a Google Drawing? Um, now, this is something that you can do in Google Slides. So, um, you know, I think we're already familiar with that idea that if I go to Google Slides and I have a blank slideshow, I can go up to the insert menu and I can add a video into slides. So there's no trick to that. That's just, that's normal. We know how to do that. We can come here, we can add a video into our slideshow with no problem. But it turns out Google Drawings doesn't have an insert video option, but there is a way to make it work. So over here is that actual uh, sample I was just showing a moment ago. This is a backgammon game that I made inside of Google Drawings. So this is Google Drawings. And the idea is, you know, you've got your chips and you can move your move your playing pieces around and you can play, play backgammon against, you know, uh, another opponent. But if you look around, you'll see I have one, two, three videos inside of my drawing, even though if you go up to insert, there is no option for inserting videos. Slides has it, like we said before, insert video, but drawings does not have an option, but you still can do it. So how does it work? Well, it's just a fun little trick. Basically what you do is you create a temporary Google slideshow and you insert the video into that like you normally can, and then you just copy and paste it into your Google Drawing and it works. It, it actually works perfectly fine. So let's say I wanted to um, take my video about how to play, you know, backgammon with Google Slides and Drawings. And let's say I copy that link. Well, what I could do is I could go to a temporary slideshow. And again, you don't need anything special, just, just a temporary slideshow. You don't even have to name it. Just have a open up a slideshow, go insert video, and I could search for it, but I'll just put the address in here. And I can drop that video, boop, right into my slideshow. Now what I can do, now that it's in my slideshow, is I can, you know, copy it, right? Click and copy. And now that I've copied it, if I come back over here, I can just simply, you know, right click paste or I can um, do control V paste either way. And it will drop the video right into my drawing. And it really is, a, I mean, it really works. If you click on it, it plays and everything. It's a full, completely playable video. 
Uh, it's not just an image of it. It is the actual video itself. And as I jump through, you can see, you know, I've got uh, uh, that, that full video there. Now, I already did that. I'll go ahead and I will... Uh, here, I'll delete that out of there. That's what I did over here. And so I added you know, a video on how to play, and then I added a video with instructions. And then I also added a video here, which is dice rolling. So if you don't have a pair of dice, you can just click on this video, and every time you pause it, it'll give you your dice roll, and, and you'll know how far to move <laughs> your, your pieces. So that's a neat option if you'd like to add videos as either directions or interactives inside of Google Drawings. Just run them through Google Slides first and copy and paste them on over. Okay, let's keep on going. Got more stuff to look at. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is adding timestamps to videos. Now this can be really helpful if it's a long video, but it's great for any length of video, but especially for long ones. So remember when I was talking about our GEG Ohio meetings, how they are like two hours long? Well, what I do after watching the video is I add to the description, I add timestamps. So if you go to the description, you click on show more, you can see that I have timestamps for all throughout the uh, video. So if somebody comes in and says, oh, I don't have two hours to watch the whole thing, but I really was interested in, you know, how you can schedule assignments um, to multiple classes in Google Classroom now. Well, if you click on that timestamp for 43 minutes and 30 seconds, it'll jump you to that exact spot in the video. And so these timestamps are fantastic for that. Well, when people see that, sometimes they think it's, you know, magic. How do you make that work? Honestly, there's nothing to it at all. You literally type in the time in hour, minute, second format in your description. That's all you do. There's no links. You don't, you don't do anything else. I, I, I basically, after a video is done, I watch the video back and I take note. I just, you know, I, I play it and I pause it when I get to different section breaks and I just write down. I just have a, a Google document and I write down what the um, the hour, the minute, and the second is for it. And then in my description, I literally just type that in. I type in like, you know, in this, whoops, sorry about that. I type in like, you know, 0 colon 14 colon 36 for, you know, 14 minutes and 36 seconds into the video. Google does all the rest. I simply type it into the description when I'm posting the video or when I go back to edit the, the, the description later, and Google automatically turns all of those into hyperlinks for you. So great way to save people some time. All right, next up, um, another cool thing about YouTube, a little bit different here, is the idea of accessing 360 degree videos. Uh, so when you run a, a search in YouTube to find uh, videos you wanna watch, you do have the option to use the filters button inside of YouTube to narrow down the videos you're looking for. And one of the features is to look for 360 degree videos, which means videos that have been shot with a 360 degree camera. And so you can move around inside of the video while you're watching it. So let's say we head back on over to YouTube here. And let's say I search for that one. That was, I think it was Bryce Canyon, I think is what that was a video of. And these are all videos about Bryce Canyon, which is awesome. But if I click on the filters button below my search, I can say I want to look for videos that, you know, were updated at a certain time or that are a certain length or a certain resolution. Well, one of the options under features is 360 degrees. If I click on that, now I'm getting videos that were shot with a 360 camera. So if I come in and I play this video about Bryce Canyon, well, after we skip our <laughs> our ad here, we'll let that we'll let that go through. There we go. Uh, as we're playing through this video, uh, what I can do is I can take my mouse and I can simply drag around and I can look down and I can look up and back and sideways and it's like I'm right there inside of the video because it was shot with a camera like that. This is a fantastic way for students to really get uh, a sense of being in the the video itself and looking around and exploring uh, the, the environment there. So definitely take advantage of 360 degree videos. All right, next up, how about free music and sound effects? Um, so if you have a YouTube channel, so you do need a channel for this. Um, and again, having a channel, there's nothing fancy about it. Uh, it basically just, it's just linked to your, to your Google account. Uh, but if you do have a YouTube channel, you'll also have access to YouTube Studio. So for example, um, 
this is just my my trainer uh, account here, uh, so it's not it's not 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 my real channel. Uh, but if I go to YouTube and I click up on my uh, little my little avatar face in the top uh, right hand corner, you'll see YouTube Studio is one of the options. That's because I have a channel, and if I didn't, you could just very quickly set up a channel. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and click on YouTube Studio because YouTube Studio is where you would go to see like you know all of your video. And again, this is just a demo trainer uh, account here. This is not my actual channel. Uh, but this is where I could see like you know content of all the videos I've uploaded um, and you know there's comments to moderate and all that kind of analytics and so forth well one of the neat things is if you go into YouTube studio there's a section called audio library it's actually down here on the left so if you go down there you can see audio library give a click on that and what's cool about this is this is an absolutely free collection of just hundreds and hundreds or thousands and thousands of free music uh, tracks and sound effects totally free you can use them in anything you say well Eric I I'm not going to be making a YouTube video that's okay you can still use these in any project you want if you're just looking for free music tracks and free sound effects they're all here in this audio library you're allowed to download them and use them any way that you would like so it doesn't even have to be in a YouTube video you could be putting them into other projects as well uh, so it's just a wonderful thing just to take advantage of so you know set up a channel even if you don't put videos on it go to your studio Studio, and then come over here and click on the audio library at this point now I can go through free music as well as sound effects and I can search or filter I can say okay I'm looking for music that fits a certain you know um, you know mood that I'm going for here so maybe I'm looking for some free music and we'll go to our filter and we'll say maybe the uh, mood that we're going for is happy and now we can apply that and I could I could add more you know things to it so uh, in, in addition to that I could you know put in a few other uh, other other uh, uh, filters there, uh, but now what it gives me is it gives me. Uh what do we have here? 703 pages <laughs> of happy music, you know? Um, and I can start playing through these. So um, I'll go ahead and we'll just click on play for one of these. And if you liked it, if you're like, oh, that's cool, I, I like that, over here is the download link. I just click download. And that's it. It's downloading that MP3. Same thing for sound effects. You know, if I was looking for a particular sound effect, I don't know, maybe I need a dog, you know, barking for some reason. Um, so here should be a dog barking. Let's see. Yep, there it is. Simple dog dog barking there. Uh, I could again come over here and hit download and now it's downloading that dog barking mp3 for me and I can use those now in any project that I want. So definitely take advantage of that. That's an awesome resource. All right, guys, and I think that brings us to the final section. The last thing we're going to talk about are YouTube extensions. Um, there are a bunch of extensions in the Chrome Web Store um, that help out with YouTube. I picked four of my favorites, things that I actually use. Um, I do have links to all of these, again, in the agenda document. So if there's any of these that you want to try out when you get to the bottom section on extensions, I have the links right out to the Chrome Web Store. So you can go and install these extensions if you would like to try any of these out. So I'm just going to give you a quick eye overview of what are some of the ones that I like. Uh, Fresh View, this is, this is a neat extension I like. If I turn this one on, what it will do is it will hide videos I've already watched. And I don't know why YouTube will show me the same videos I've seen before. And so and I don't know why that is. It's like, I've already watched that video. If I have FreshTube installed and I toggle this on, it will hide any videos I've seen before. So I only get fresh videos. And I can also adjust the threshold. Like, well, how, you know, how much of it did I have to watch to consider that I'm done with it? You know, if I've seen 90% of the video, then, you know, I, I, I don't want to see it pop up again. So that one's nice. I like that. Another one that's useful is the return YouTube dislike extension. What this does is it turns back on the dislike count option um, that got taken away um, not too long ago here. 
Um, and the, the negative thing about not having the dislike feature is it's harder to evaluate if a video is good before you watch it. Like if you're looking to watch a video that's a tutorial video or how to fix something broken in your house or something like that, you want to know if it's a good video. And because the thumbs down, the dislikes are no longer visible, you can't tell. All you can tell is how many people liked it. Well, by turning putting this extension on, it will pull from the archive of every thumb every disliked uh, you know, uh, video vote in the past. It's got the archive of all of that. And then it picks up new dislikes from people who do this while using the extension. And so it's not perfect, but it gives you a pretty good idea like mm, maybe this video is not as trustworthy as another one. And it can help you as you're choosing what videos to watch. Uh, and then next up, I like one called Pocket Tube. Uh, this is one to help manage your subscriptions. What I like about this one is it lets me create what are called subscription groups. So I can have all of the video, all the YouTube channels I'm subscribed to, but then I can drop them into groups. So I've got like EdTech, Food, Google, Music, News, Science. And then if I click on that subscription group, it only shows me videos from that subgroup because I subscribe to such a wide range of things. If I just go to my subscriptions, they're all mixed together. This allows me to break them out, um, and I really like that. It makes it easier for me to find what I'm looking for. And then lastly, um, there's a bunch of extensions that do this kind of thing, but I chose Reclipped. I think it's one of the better of the group. This is one of those note-taking extensions for YouTube. So the idea is with Reclipped, and there's many others that do this, but this is this is this one's solid. I really like this one. While you're watching the video, if you've got the Reclipped extension open on the side. Anytime you want during the video, you can just start typing notes in about what you're learning in the video, and it will record your note as you're typing it, and it will timestamp it. It'll put in the timestamp of what was happening in the video while you typed that. So you can take notes that are synced to the video. There's also a screenshot button that'll take a screenshot of what was happening in the video at that moment. And then later, when you open up your notes, you can click on any of those timestamps to jump to that spot in the video and you can download your notes uh, so that you're able to have those for studying. Uh, they've got a free plan for everybody, but then they've got a basic plan that is totally free for students and for teachers that has you know more, more features in there. So uh, great extension. All right, guys. Well, I know that was a lot of stuff to throw at you there, but I hope, I hope that uh, you picked up a couple of neat new ideas with YouTube. Maybe something that you uh, had not tried before, were not aware of some of those features. Um, if you do want to get back to any of these resources, again, remember that can all be found at bit.ly slash Kurtz dash YouTube tips. And I'd love to hear from you. What are your YouTube tips? I'm always looking for new ones. So please reach out to me and share what, uh, what tips you would share as well. But thank you so much. Thank you so much for taking the time to learn with me here today. Really appreciate it. Take care, everybody.